My parents divorced when I was very young. I lived with my mother. My mother later refound a man to marry. I do everything very carefully. My stepfather was very bad to me. He often abused me, especially after he was drunk that I don't know where I wrong, he came home and began to beat me. This time I was hurt very badly. My stepfather directly threw me out of the house. I was very lucky that I was found by a passerby and taken to the hospital for treatment. I stayed in the hospital for six months before my body recovered. This experience had nothing to do with my near-death experience, but I would like to explain some background information about myself. I did not have a happy childhood, and after I recovered, my mother decided to take my sister and me and move to another city. It was very clear to me that I should forget these experiences and move on with my life. But I didn't get any psychological help. These experiences took a serious toll on my psyche, and I could not forget them, and shortly after I moved to my new home, I attempted suicide for the first time. The experience made me so depressed that the way I killed myself was almost always fatal, and despite this, I would be found on time and taken to the hospital. What I experienced later had such a huge impact on my life that I have never tried again since then, nor will I ever try again. Not long after we moved. My sister passed away in a car accident. After my sister's death, I saw no hope for my life. My sister was the only person in the world that I was close to and I even questioned my existence. She was the only reason I was trying to live. This time I vowed to succeed in ending my life. I felt that something was very wrong with me psychologically so I went to the psychiatric unit of the hospital by myself, hoping that they could protect me from harm or help me find a reason to continue living. Three days after I entered the hospital, I approached my nurse and I wanted to talk to someone because I wanted to die at that moment. She told me she had to go to dinner and she would talk to me later. Then I became very depressed and now I just want to leave the hospital. The hospital allowed me to go out for two hours and I left the hospital and I found a drugstore. There I bought a lot of painkillers. Then I went to the nearest hotel and went to my room. I swallowed pills and drank a lot of alcohol which I took from the refrigerator in my room. I didn't think about what would happen in the process of dying. I thought that death would be the end of everything. That I would go to sleep peacefully and never wake up, that the rest would be a blank slate, that I had no faith. I wouldn't say I was an atheist, but I wasn't sure I believed in God either. After an hour, I decided I had better go back to the hospital because I had gone over two hours. In real life, I'm a person who doesn't like to cause trouble for others and I didn't want to hold the hospital responsible for my own business, so I decided to go back and I didn't tell them I had taken my pain medication. It took me about an hour to get back to the hospital and when I arrived, I was greeted by two security guards because I was an hour late. It was obvious that I was drunk because I couldn't walk in a straight line and I must have smelled alcohol. They escorted me back to my room. The nurse shined a flashlight in my eyes, checked my pupils, and then told me to go to bed, which I did, and I went to bed as requested, thinking I would not wake up again. The next morning I woke up feeling very nauseous and I was confused as to why I was still alive. I spent the whole day in the hospital, running to the bathroom every so often to vomit. I felt very sick, but I was still very energetic, which was very confusing to me, and the nurse just thought I was in a bad mood and had had a drink. I wanted to tell the nurses about the painkillers, hoping they would do something for me to make me feel better because I felt so bad, but I decided to keep quiet. By the end of the night, I was even more uncomfortable. 
I told the nurse about the painkillers I was taking. The nurse was skeptical after hearing this, and the doctor ran a blood test on me anyway. The blood test showed that I had taken some pain medication, but it didn't look serious. I was very confused because I knew how much I was taking, and the doctor still insisted on giving me regular blood tests to make sure everything was okay. Within a few days, the doctors told me that my liver was severely damaged. They continued to do blood tests on me. And each time the blood tests showed more and more liver damage. I was later transferred to the intensive care unit. I now had a second thought, I no longer wanted to die. At this point, I was conscious and did not feel very sick. I had a hard time accepting and understanding what the doctors were telling me. The hospital contacted my parents and told them to get to the hospital as soon as possible because I was very sick. Before my parents arrived, I left my body. I was floating in the air and could see myself lying in bed. I heard the nurse yell that my heart and breathing were going to stop. Then I fell into a dark tunnel. It was pitch black and I couldn't see anything. Suddenly, I saw a snake-like animal crawling toward me and I was terrified. I knew I was surrounded by these creatures. They lunged at me and I kept falling down. I was terrified and I felt like I was going to hell, so I started thinking, and for some strange reason, I remembered a prayer my grandmother used to say to me when I was a child, and I prayed to God to forgive me for my fault. I prayed for God to take my soul away. I began to pray it over and over again. The next thing I saw was my sister, who had just recently been hit and killed by a drunk driver. There was light shining around her and she looked so happy. She began to guide me and next I appeared in another tunnel, this one going up. This tunnel was very bright and had indescribable colors. I walked very fast and at the end there was a light. I felt calm. I was completely mesmerized by the light and wanted to keep walking towards it, but as I started to get closer, I heard a male voice telling me that I had to go back. My time was not up yet. The voice continued to tell me that I had to go back to help teach more people. Then I realized I was back in my body, but I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't do it no matter how hard I tried. I was in a coma for the next three weeks and then slowly recovered and because of this experience I was able to find God and see my sister again. I don't know why God decided to save me. But I am very thankful that he did. Please don't be like me, hell is a very real and very scary place. I never wanted to go there again, and the rest of my days I faced life positively knowing that this was the only way I could see my sister again in heaven.